Are there any uh, general questions or, you, or you know, beers you want to go back to? Any, anything you need to know from me right now? Well, I, my question is, uh, <clears throat> can you talk about the distribution of this beer? Where can we find it? Uh, my answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, um, Pete might know. You know, we, uh, we have distribution throughout the country with the Dundee beers, and if you guys have any specific questions for, uh, about distribution, we have a, a locator. It's not external, uh, but any, any question, questions you have specifically about distribution, if you let me know the zip codes you're looking for, I can find that out for you. What we got? Yeah, we're all over, but I, I work mainly in the brew house, so once it leaves the warehouse, man, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm in the dark. Chris has a, a strong desire to go raid the ice cream section at 7-Eleven now. It's great. And, and, and Steve, I didn't tell you all seven malts because, you know, we have to keep some things. Yeah. <laughs> I think, okay, I, I, think I think I gave out six. That's it. We've got to keep one of them secret. You'll never guess. Right. <laughs> Fair enough, Jim. Fair enough. Sweet. And, you know, we announced last time um, in our last virtual tasting that IPA – was just becoming available for the first time in six packs and on draft. Um, and Darren is asking, are, are there plans for any of the new beers uh, that aren't currently available in six pack and on draft, like uh, Kolsch and Stout that are in the, the craft pack only right now? And uh, the answer to that is, you know, you guys keep your feedback coming. Just keep letting us know. And, um, you know, uh, no plans are carved in stone. We just we'll keep it open-ended. And we really... We really like to listen to the feedback. This is where this innovation came from this year, as we were hearing from our customers that they wanted more flavors, they wanted uh, new varieties. So we really do listen. Uh, we spend a lot of time listening. Um, you know, I, we, Jim, I think was going to mention to you the, that he's on Twitter. Dundee Beer is on Twitter, and you can find Jim at Dundee Brewer That's right. on Twitter. So we're always out there listening, uh, trying to do a better job, you know, always trying to improve and, and do, uh, do the best job for what you guys are looking for. So We had, we had the question, um, we were talking earlier about, you know, are there different beers coming? You know, how, how does that decide? And, and we, we did talk about how it's kind of a balance between, um, you know, some folks really love the, the pale ale and they want it in sixes and cases or, or whatever. Um, and then some folks really like the new stuff. So, you know, we've done some new stuff. In the fall, we're going back. We're bringing back the pail and, and uh, the, the porter for a little while. Uh, and then I'm sure before too long, we'll, we'll have new beer. So with the Dundee stuff, it's, it's really kind of a, a, a give and take with the older and, and newer style. So we do both. Um, and then I did want to mention the, the Twitter thing before I forget. Uh, you know, I'm trying to join, you know, be a part of the growing social media and, and, and all that good stuff. So I, I did sign up on the Twitter and then we did a tasting event here in town and we're going around tasting different tables. And uh, I ran into Jamie, who was a part of this rock beer group, you know, this Rochester tasting. I think, Darren, you know about these guys, right? And, and that's, uh, the, that's the, the hashtag for those on Twitter, those who are active on Twitter. It's the hashtag rock beer. But there's also a, a rock beer blog and a, a rock beer Twitter feed. Yeah. And so, a Facebook page, too, now. And a Facebook page. Yeah, and a satellite, I think. We have a satellite yet? We should get a satellite. So, anyway, I, I, I worked with Jamie at Rohrbox years ago. So, you know, we get talking, and then she takes my phone and signs up everybody. So now I'm all a part of that. And, and I, I know some of you guys have been drinking, there you go, some of you guys have been drinking the uh, summer wheat, and it's really actually been a lot of fun to kind of be a part of that and hear what those guys are saying about the beers and let them know about uh, even this virtual tasting, they're interested in that. So we're hearing from people in all those different outlets. Great. You know, I, I'm more traditional, you know, go out and see them at the accounts and, 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 and pour a beer and talk to somebody, but it's very cool to extend your reach this Absolutely. way, too. It's fun. I have a question about distribution. Yeah. I haven't seen your beers in the Northwest here, uh, Washington, Oregon. We just recently uh, had IPA uh, availability in Seattle. I, I remember we, uh, we shared the news about that. And if you had any, um, any zip codes specifically or let us know what area you're in, we can look that up for you. Is Alan correct? That's right. Yeah, let us. This is the beer mecca, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, let us know. Uh, all you other guys out there, this, this, this is the beer mecca. <laughs> you, should oh, wow. beer, you should have your beer here. Oh, I see. Yeah, let me know. We can look into that for you. 
And now Lou is asking, um, you know, do we have any beers that are four and a half or lower? What's the ABV on the summer wheat? Well, I was just looking at that. Yeah, summer wheat's four and a half. All the other ones are about in the fives, you know, verging on six. You know, they're all a little bit, you know, <laughs> they're all in that range. Uh, summer wheat's uh, actually our lowest, I believe. So, uh, And a couple questions um, just about the the six packs versus the craft pack. You know, uh, the summer wheat is available in six packs on drafts because – it's part of the seasonal line. The seasonal line is Irish red, the summer wheat. Then uh, during the holidays, during fall and winter, we've got the Oktoberfest and then the Festival. Those are all available in six packs and on draft, as is the IPA. But um, the Kolsch and the Stout you're going to find in the craft pack until the fall um, with the IPA and the Pale Bock. Then IPA and Pale Bock stay in the rotation, and Porter and Pale Ale replace the Kolsch and the Stout. So... Um, that's as far as availability goes. That's that's what you're looking at, and that's where you'll find stout is in that craft pack. Cool. I'm glad you like the stout. We we spent a lot of time at, at Taste Panel making sure that that one was exactly what we wanted, <laughs> even after it was made. You know. Hey Jim, this is Steve. Steve. I had um I had a a, a test batch. I guess was on tap at Monty's on draft one time. Yeah. How close is that to this? You think? Uh, it was. You know, in, in a. In a bizarre way, it was completely different, but uh, at the end result, I think was fairly similar. Um, the test batch, uh, you know, done at a different brewery, different, totally different conditions. The the fermentability was was off. It was way low. So when we were trying to figure out the sweetness that we wanted, we had to kind of factor in the fact that the the test batch didn't ferment the way exactly the way we expected. So all the flavors were there. But the balance was different because of the sweetness. So then when we did it for production, it was kind of a, uh, uh, it, it was a fun exercise to, to try to figure all that out. And it actually wound up just how we wanted. Um, but, you know, it, it, it came to it from a different way. I, that's the best way I can explain it. So, you know, okay. they, they, they were related, but there were definitely differences. But that's why we, that's why we do that, you know. I just have a comment here. Good. I think that some, the, the stout should be in your summer pack. I think it's a great great summer beer, your, your stout. I think it would be a fine beer to, to drink uh, during the summer months. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Yep, and that, is, that will be available through the end of summer. Don't think about dark beers in summer, but you know, I think about dark beers all the time. <laughs> but, uh, I think, yeah, that's just the way I am. But I, but I think uh, it would be uh, excellent as a summer beer. Good. I mean, that's how we feel, too, and, and hopefully the, the guys that are out there buying the, the craft bags you know, feel the same way. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. You're preaching to the choir on that one, but <laughs> it's a good breakfast beer too. Yeah, I was going to say I try and drink dark beer in the morning, and uh, yeah, this is a good starter. You know, that now that's Steve. I know. <laughs> it'd, it'd be good with the uh, you know with some of the watching some of the football from South Africa here. You know that that uh, seven forty five game. You know, absolutely, man, absolutely. Yeah. That's why we make so many different beers. There's all these varying occasions that you need different beers for. You know? That's right. We have a beer for every occasion here. I have to tell you, I was in South Africa a couple years ago, and uh, you know beer is not sold in grocery stores there. Wine is, but beer you have to buy from a liquor store. It's really? It's strange, right? The wine people dominate the market. But they have these little rural oh. stores where they sell beer and, uh, and booze, you know. You go in there, and there's one that said, Stout and... Stout and liquor, or something. I went in there and I said, well, "What do you have in the way of stout?" They didn't have a single stout there. R- really? I didn't even know what stout was. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Was a little African village, you never know. <laughs> Truth in advertising, whatever, whatever works. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can't even get used to that in this country. I mean, with that little time I spent up in Maine, you know, y- you could buy liquor in the grocery store. So you know, you're going down, you got cereal, bread, tequila. It, it was just. The most bizarre thing. I mean, living in New York, we just we, we can't do that. So, it, you, you know, Jim, uh, you speak of that. I was in a uh, in a supermarket, uh, Mayors, but it's spelled funny in Ohio. And um, there was one. They sell liquor in the store, but there was one uh, one aisle that was labeled wine and water. And I was thinking, oh, it's the Feast of Cana, and Jesus is somewhere in the middle doing the conversion. <laughs> wine and water, perfect. Cheers. Cheers.